ago on a one-month trip to Kunming, China, my family and I found a baby girl. Born at under five pounds, this girl suffered from esophageal atresia, which is a fancy way of saying her mouth didn't connect to her stomach. She couldn't eat. She was kept alive only by an IV and oxygen machine. In desperation, her parents left her at the hospital, hoping someone would find her. And someone did. We named her Anastasia, which means new life, and got her to Shanghai to get the operation that would save her. This is Anna at a doctor's checkup after her successful surgery. Now, as a 10-year-old, I was far from instrumental in this process. I got involved at the end of that school year, when my parents called a family vote to decide whether or not to move to China to adopt her. At the time, I was living in Jersey City, New Jersey, in a comfortable brownstone, attending a private school. Life was close to perfect, but I knew that there was still a baby girl on the other side of the world, without a home or a family. Ever since I met Anna, I'd done a lot of talking. I told my friends about her, prayed that she'd become my sister, and even wrote my fourth grade persuasive essay, trying to convince my parents to adopt her. But at 10 years old, even I realized that talk doesn't cook right. Talking wouldn't put adoption papers in my hands. However, when presented with the jarring option of leaving behind my childhood home, saying goodbye to my friends, and moving to a foreign country in pursuit of adoption, I hesitated. I had to pause to think, because as easy as it is to talk about doing great things, actually making the sacrifices and doing them is tough. But the truth is, all action comes at a cost. I encountered that cost from the moment we landed in the Pudong International Airport. I was totally lost in the scary, unfamiliar world. For my first three years in China, I attended a semi-local school, where all of my classmates' first language was Chinese, and the majority of my classes were conducted in Mandarin. My grades dropped instantaneously. Fond memories of home brought me to tears on a regular basis, and above all, I wrestled with making friends to replace the dear companions I'd left back in New Jersey. Apart from the vast cultural barrier that separated me from my classmates, language was a big issue. I had to start from square one, and let me tell you, Chinese cannot be made easy. <laughs> Upon seeing my black hair and dark eyes, my classmates and teachers immediately began speaking to me in rapid Chinese. It took only a few seconds before they realized that, as a second-generation Asian American, I spoke only English, so they quickly kept their distance. For a year and a half, I had no good friends and felt that no one would ever understand me. Plunged into this world I couldn't understand, I began to question my decision to move. Was all of this really worth it? Talk wasn't cooked right, but action comes at a cost. We can attempt to do great things to facilitate radical change in our world without putting anything in. But in reality, you can't cook rice without experiencing some heat. Ever heard of the law of the conservation of energy, of mass? You can't create something from nothing. Any good thing that has ever happened in the world has required sacrifice. So in my case, it was culture shock, a new language, and utter loneliness. This is where I live now. But I'm not complaining. All of this cooked rice in ways that my brownstone house and private school life never could. I got to watch as Anna grew up, spoke her first words, took her first steps. I got to watch as she transformed from a five-pound baby writhing in the hospital bed into a beautiful six-year-old who can now proudly sing almost every song in Frozen. <laughs> With all this cooking, there was no longer any time for talking. Every year, on July 15th, my family and I celebrate the day, not the day that we got to China, but the day that we left our safe and comfortable lives. The day we chose action. That choice continues to shape how we, as a family, confront the world today. Moving to China paves the way for many more opportunities for action. My parents now direct Baobei Foundation, which works to save severely disabled orphans, much like my sister. This work has become a big part of our entire family's lives as my siblings and I now share in the work and share our parents with up to 30 babies at any given time. This is Anna feeding Joy, an orphan who suffers from spina bifida and hydrocephalus. She knows most of these babies by name. It's now her turn to help others, to cook a little rice of her own. I now encourage you to choose action. We all have our own brownstone lives. We enjoy good food, cool clothes, and beautiful apartments, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we talk about wanting to change the world. And that just might take a step outside of our comfort zone. It may be hot and tiring and painful at times, 
But that's how you put bread. Thank you.